Hey everybody, welcome to the church building. We are in 2 Samuel chapter 6. We're going to try to read through 6 through 8 today. That's the plan. I do have a candle for those who are wondering. Kind of has a terrible smell. It's like a rose soap that, that you don't want your house to smell like. But it's the only candle I have. <laughs> This candle was actually gifted to one girl who then gifted it to another guy who then re-gifted it to me. So it's had one, two, three. This is owner number four. Original guy, girl, new guy, new guy. So I'm owner number four of this pink candle. It smells kind of like a soapy, soapy rose. Soapy rose. Let's dive right in. Chapter 6. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and ca castanets and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there because he reached out his hand to the ark, and he died there beside the ark of God. David was angry because the Lord had burst forth with an outburst upon Uzzah, so that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, How can the ark of the Lord come into my care? So David was unwilling to take the ark of the Lord into his care in the city of David. Instead, David took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. It was told King David, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Verse 16. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. David returned to bless his household, but Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants' maids, as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly uncover himself. David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me in place of your father and all his household to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, that I have danced before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes, but by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Boom! We showed her. What does that even mean? I don't know. I guess she insulted the king, 
God's anointed. I think she's trying to say, hey, look, David, you're making a fool of yourself. You know, you're the king and you're dancing around, uncovered, basically. I don't know. Maybe she shouldn't have uttered an opinion. Just seems, just seems a little harsh, you know. Enough comment by me. Enough comment. Chapter 7. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I've been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings, but I will not take my steadfast love from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and with, and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. So what are the promises that are made here? I will make, a, make for you a great name, verse 9, 10. I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, and they will live in their own place and be disturbed no more. Okay, so nobody's going to bother them. Evildoers shall afflict them no more. Also verse 10. Verse 12, David's offspring will be raised up, and a kingdom will be established. Okay, good things are happening. Verse 18, the king David, then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house with a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God, and what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have brought sorry, wrought all this greatness, so that your servant may know it. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God, for there is no one like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Who is like your people, like Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went to redeem it as a people, and to make a name for himself, doing great and awesome things for them, by driving out before his people nations and their gods? And you established your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, confirm it forever, do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. 
And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. Let's see, chapter 8. Sometime afterward, David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. David took Metheg Amma out of the hand of the Philistines. He also defeated the Moabites and, making them lie down on the ground, measured them off with a cord. He measured two lengths of a cord for those who were to be put to death and one length for those who were to be spared. And the Moabites became servants to David and brought tribute. David also struck down King Hadet, had Adizer, King Hadadizer, son of Rehob of Zobah, as he went to restore his monument at the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,700 horsemen and 20,000 foot soldiers. David hamstrung all the chariot horses, but left enough for a hundred chariots. When the Arameans of Damascus came to help King Hadadazer, had a, had a deezer, had a deezer of Zoba. David killed twenty-two thousand men of the Arameans. Then David put garrisons among the Arameans of Damascus, and the Aramean and the Aram and the Aram, I can't say it. I just can't say it. Arameans became servants to David and brought tribute. The Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. David took the gold shields that were carried by the servants of Hadadazer, Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem from Beda and from Berothe, towns of Hadadezer. King David took a great amount of bronze. When King Toi of Hamath heard that David had defeated the whole army of Hadadezer, Toi sent his son Joram to King David to greet him and to congratulate him because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him. Now Hadadezer had often been at war with Toy. Joram brought with him articles of silver, gold, and bronze. These also King David dedicated to the Lord together with the silver and gold that he dedicated from all the nations he subdued, from Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines, Amalek, and from the spoil of King Hadadezer, son of Rehob, Rahab of Zobah. David won a name for himself. When he returned, he killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons. And all the Edomites became David's servants, and the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. Verse 15, So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered justice and equity to all his people. Joab, son of Zeruai, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilad, was recorder. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Amalek. Ahimelech, son of Abathar, were priests. Sarai was secretary. Benai, son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's sons were priests. So all is nice for David at this point. He managed to bring back the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, it seems. God made a promise to David that good things will happen to Israel and to him. David says, good, make that happen, because you tell the truth. David attacks more people surrounding him, including the Philistines, and wipes them out, or at least defeats them. And good things happen to people around David. And that concludes our reading for today. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for following along. I appreciate it. And just hoping you're doing well. You know? See you later.